For USCFootball.com, I'm Keely Orr here with Dan Weber. It's analysis of USC's loss to Notre Dame, 49-14. to It was an ugly game. Um, I think after this season, the couple games that we saw, people were questioning what's, what's the real USC team. They kind of got away with mistakes early on in the season. I think this game kind of told you where they are at, what this UST, USC team is. Yeah, in a 49-14 in a, uh, to 14 game, they are the 14. That's where they are. That's who they are. This is the most points Notre Dame scored since uh, 1977 in this uh, r uh, rivalry. And by my math, that's like 40 years. So this is a real low point. Uh, this is a team that despite what you know, people are telling us after the game, uh, they're not getting better. This is, this is not, you know, they can say, oh, but Notre Dame was better than, they're not getting better. Mm -hmm. They're just not. There's so many things that went wrong in this game. If you're the coaches, where do you start? If you're the players, where do you start addressing what the issues are with this team? Well, I think after the first fumbled snap, you start the bus and you just say, not our night. You know, we're just, I mean, this was, you know, we were, it was one of those, well, we're going to be past all that stuff that's been happening to us. And then boom, 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 three turnovers, three scores. Notre Dame scores virtually on every turnover they get this year. And uh, that proved to be uh, true tonight. So they didn't even give them. I mean, the sad thing is, USC didn't even give themselves a chance. Whether they could have done better or not, they didn't. They would. When you give away three touchdowns like that, and then you miss point blank field goals, and you don't score when you should score, and you call the wrong plays at the goal line, and you get stoned, uh, you know what? They're just, you can't almost have any expectations to win a game like this when every part of it, the preparation, uh, the physicality, the game plan, the execution, it's just all all rotten. I mean, really bad. I mean, there was just nothing to like about uh, this game tonight. A common thing that was asked throughout the presser and um, afterwards when we were talking to players and coaches, they were asked, are you getting better each week? What did they have to say, and do you think it was accurate? Uh, uh, we couldn't get any of the coaches to admit they're not getting better. I mean, it's just they, they give you answers, you know, like, you know, we're, we're playing physical in practice. Their kids will say we're tackling in practice. No, they're not. Uh, but, you know, and, and the whole answer was from almost everybody, got to go watch the film. We'll figure out what our mistakes are. No, it's not about mistakes. It's not about looking at this play or that play. It's about getting your clock cleaned on both lines of scrimmage, just getting busted out of there, knocked on your – you know, on your backside. It's about missing tackles over and over again. It's about, you know, careless mistakes. It's all the things that you're supposed to be getting done in practice that clearly aren't getting done in practice. I mean, I had actually had a good feeling about them, watching them uh, at the uh, Friday walkthrough because they felt so good about themselves. And then you realize they have no earthly reason to be feeling that good about themselves. But uh, uh, this was... Uh, this was really embarrassing. Notre Dame is a nice team. They're not that good. That was uh, that just, you know, to let those two guys run the way they did. And you would have plays where four and five USC tacklers would miss. I mean, or you'd have plays, 84-yard run out up the middle when nobody even touches him. How is that possible? How can you run 84 yards straight up the middle and not get touched? I mean... I, I, it, it's it's mind-boggling how bad you know tonight was. We've been trying to pin down the coaches after games. Are do you feel like the coaches are taking enough responsibilities for issues that USC has? I guess what I don't know is what are they really thinking? You know, are, are they just telling us, you know, what they're telling us, and it's about mistakes, and this is not our night, and blah blah blah, and we're gonna clean it up, and uh, we control our own destiny, and the Pac-12 South and then the Pac-12 and no you don't not with with this kind of an effort you don't control anything you, what you control is how well you practice how hard you practice if you keep saying well we don't have enough numbers we gotta you know we gotta get everybody to the game next week well, you'll get your clock cleaned again you know you probably better make it you know for the guys that you got you gotta practice hard you gotta get up to game speed you gotta do things uh, this is not about uh, getting plays right, figuring out. You know, they, they did some of, you know, some of the coaches talked about they lose gap control. Well, you lose gap control because that other guy is quicker, stronger, and tougher than you are. 
That's what they got to do. They got to stop losing gap. And that's not from watching the film and saying, oh, that's a mistake. That's from getting out there and figuring out how I can be the guy who gets gap control and not that guy. And th that's a worry, I think. In that sense, does it benefit anyone if the coaches are not very honest with us after games like this? Should they just be upfront with us and tell us the mistakes? Is it leaving kind of their players out to dry a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't talk about the players' mistakes. I would say, you know, we didn't do a good job. It's so obvious we did not do a good job preparing this team for Notre Dame. You know, we, we kind of knew what Notre Dame was going to do. According to the kids, they didn't do one thing different. So we knew what they were going to do. We weren't prepared to handle it on either side of the ball or on special teams. That's our fault. That's our, you know, job to get these kids ready. They weren't ready. That's on us. That's what I'd be saying. Uh, I don't think it's on them. You know, the whole idea, got to clean up some mistakes like it's on them. They're not, you know, it's one of those, they're not good students. You know what? Maybe you're not a good teacher. That's your point. Um, as far as injuries go, Helton revealed that Sam Darnold had an ankle injury that's, that happened after the Washington State game. He's been fighting through it. We talked to Sam Darnold afterwards. He says nothing he can't play through, but he did tweak it, and that's when he saw Matt Fink come in. And then you don't want to risk injuring uh, Sam Darnold anymore. Um, Iman Marshall came out with a knee injury. They didn't disclose what it is. He's going to get an MRI. We'll know more about that later. Chumadoga retweets his ankle. And Voorhees has a, Andrew Voorhees has a back issue. Um, so the Trojans are coming out a little banged up. Just a little, although Chuma went by us so fast. Yeah. If his ankle was injured, it's not injured a whole lot. Yeah. And it uh, looks like Iman, Iman was definitely injured. But I think it's interesting. Sam Darnold hasn't made a single injury list yet. Not after the Washington State game, not any days in practice, didn't make tonight's injury list uh, of the original four, and then, oh yeah, by the way, he uh, tweaked his ankle in the Washington State game. You know, I, as far as, as I'm concerned, he looked like he played the Washington State game with a tweaked ankle. I mean, I, I you know, they're saying it happened then, we'll see, uh, but, uh, but he clearly got hurt again tonight uh, of some sort. They said he got rolled up on, on his ankle, but he couldn't, you know, before he got hurt, he wasn't able to elude anybody, wasn't able to run away from anybody. How many, uh, where they just got those, you know, got a hand on his ankle and boom, down he goes. Uh, we used to not see that last year. He could run through stuff like that. So uh, uh, I don't know if we'll ever get the whole story. Maybe they don't know the whole story you know, with Sam as far as where he is physically, but he's not in the right place. Thought he'd look, you know, better in practice, but uh, once the once this game started, you know, everything went sideways and he did not look good. Mm -hmm. After such an ugly game as this was, where does the team go from here? I know, like Helton said, they control their destiny, and they do, um, but it's kind of demoralizing to have a game like this in a away stadium. How do you come back and regroup? I think you come back and you change, you know, they're saying we got to keep doing what we're doing and just keep, I think you change what you're doing and you change it, you know, significantly this week and you go into Tempe with a different team. I have, you know, the worry is you say we're doing all the right things. We just have to tweak them and get them better, not make those mistakes and we'll be fine. Uh, no, that's not the way you go. That's not how you get yourself ready for Tempe. They're going to come after them. Uh, uh, Arizona State, uh, that's a, you know, they're always physical, whether they're any good or not is always, you know, the question, but they're going to be physical. They're going to come after them. They're going to watch this game and think, man, we got, you know, we're going to punch these guys in the mouth and they're, they're really not going to have any answer for us. I, I would say, you know, if it were me, I'd probably practice twice this week in pads and no matter how many, you know, and say, look, the guys that we're going to take with us Saturday to Tempe are going to be ready to play. And it's going to be a physical game, and we're going to be ready to play physically. I'm, you know, I'd probably do some tackling in practice this week, and uh, with both lines, I think we'd be uh, we'd be really, uh, you know, pounding on one another and playing fast and physical. And I wouldn't worry about all the technicalities and well, we you look at that mistake and you just no, no, just get ready to play football the way uh, football has to be played. And I would say to them, look, every game we come out of here this season. We talk about the other team being really physical. We're going to talk about USC being physical after this game. 
because we're going to be physical. We're going to be physical every day at practice, and we're going to go in there knowing we're going to be the physical team Saturday night. What are the chances of them doing that? I don't know. <laughs> Not very much, not very great, I don't think, but well, that's what I do. I was about to ask you, that's what you do, but well, from what we've seen of the staff, they're not very, they're very reluctant to make changes. How much does the rest of the season and the outlook are, is based on the changes that they make in this upcoming week? I think a big time, big, big, big time. I mean, I don't think they can afford to lose this game. I mean, I just think yeah. it's so obvious. Uh, you know, we had a, an example in 2012 where they got off to, you know, a, a really good start with Lane Kiffin. And I don't know if they were 5-1 and one or 6-1 and one and ended up 7-6. and six. And they just went pew. And uh, I, I think they're, you know, near that place. I mean, I know Cam Smith said the defense kept fighting. I didn't think the defense kept fighting. I thought the defense kind of laid down there toward the end and uh, basically, uh, you know, gave up a couple of really easy touchdowns where it just didn't look like they – much cared about, uh, you know, tackling anybody or, or playing any defense. And that's a, that was a bad sign, I think. Uh, that would worry me if I were the coach. I wouldn't have to watch the film to know that. Mm -hmm. All right, that's going to wrap it up. From South Bend, Indiana, for Dan Weber, I'm Keely Orr. For more, check out uscfootball.com.